it's really the Dilla feel. Jay Dilla was one of the most prolific producers. He's one of the best to ever do it. Jay Dilla, who composed some of the most revered beats in hip hop history. Jay Dilla, Jay Dilla. So I'm messaging the other week with Ben, who's writing some tracks for me for my Minel video shoot. We're tossing ideas around, and I remembered one of my favorite videos of the 20 teens. Stay with me here, it was Chesley Cheese Allen playing Jay Dilla's classic song, Swagger. And here's Chesley's rendition. So anyway, I'm speaking to Ben about what we could potentially write, and I send him the Chesley clip. Then he sends back this. Which we call, I Like to California. So as I'm practicing this, and two other tracks for the Minel shoot, I post it on Instagram. Mainly to reassure myself I'm not a rank imposter who doesn't deserve to drum. And lo and behold, it starts to get comments like this. Basically, can you show us what this beat is, how to play it, etc which immediately reminds me of another beat people ask me about often, a little guitar riff my friend Terriver wrote for me almost a decade ago that goes a little like this. Anyway, both of these beats are examples of something I've already covered, Jay Dilla beats. But it struck me that it's probably time for a little refresh on the Dilla thing. A little more of my current video style, a little more history context, etc. Then I'll show you a few different ways I like to play them. Along with some drummers much better than I am and what they do with them. Especially since I'm stuck in an airport. And I'm not going to make my deadline to call through hours of footage from the Minel trip and still get a video to you by this Thursday. But I will be bringing you that video very soon. Anyway, today on the channel. Dilla Beats update. Stay tuned. Oh. Already did the channel theme, didn't we? Well, let's change the scene. Well, hey guys, guess I'm back in the studio. Anyway, if you'd like to support this video, you can do that by supporting yourself. Get my brand new three video mini course by clicking the link below the player. I'll teach you the three semi-secret things great drummers do better than we do. That's free. And imagine if there's just one thing in there that helps you play, right? Anyways, sponsor message over, on with the show. Speaking of which, got a leash and a wish, just a rock you miss. Come Make on. a militant move, beat my strategy. Oh, wow. End of the day, you're not mad at me. Here's a classic Dilla style beat. It's Chris Dave's rendition of Find A Way by Tribe Called Quest. I'm playing this because it covers all the bases. But you hear the Dilla influence all over the place. From this beat from Tom Mish. To this from Hiatus Coyote. To this from Spanky. To this from Richard Spavin. Feeling so fine. Just wanna taste you. It's become so ubiquitous by now that it's a little reductive to just say Dilla beat like it's one thing. It's more of a how than a what. Sort of like a jazz beat. Before we get any deeper though, let's turn this over to Vox to tell us a little bit about who Dilla was. Dilla was a producer out of Detroit in the mid-90s through his early death in 2006 from a rare blood disease. He passed away just three days after releasing one of his most fascinating and beloved albums, Donuts. He worked with an astounding list of iconic artists and pulled off the majority of his sound with just a few simple instruments, machines, and samplers, one of them being the MPC. Anyway, Dilla made a lot of beats that don't sound like the Dilla beat we associate with Chris Dave and his fans, like this one from The Far Side's Run. But for our purposes today, we're going to confine ourselves to that specific half-straight, half-swung style that's made its way into so much modern playing. And I'm going to give you a few things in the DNA of Dilla Beats to hang on to, especially if you're new to this. Now, let's go to the guy who probably explained it best, Arthur L.A. Buckner. Straight eighth notes are black, and swung dotted eighth notes are white, then I want to play in the gray area, okay? It's, it's going to be in between straight and swung. It's going to be both. So here's a completely straight beat. And 
And here's a classic swung beat based on triplets. But Dilla 101 is finding a spot halfway between straight and swung. There's a school of thought that Dilla beats are really quintuplets and that that's a good way to practice them. Let me demo. Here I am playing a beat in five that's subdivided at the end of three to cut the bar in half. You could also count this in four as just kind of a Dilla beat. Sometimes I use this to modulate between four and five because that's a great way to keep a gig. But I think the five thing is kind of a red herring. For starters, there's no evidence Jay Dilla himself was thinking in quintuplets. And practically speaking, unless you're a real rhythm nerd, it may not be the best way into this beat. Here's Richard Spaven talking about a more organic approach to it. And that's just a feel thing and just adding some like bend and swing without actually thinking about specific subdivisions. So if I were learning the bones of a basic Chris Dave Dilla drum beat, I'd probably just stick with finding my own happy medium between straight and swung. And this Chris Dave cover of Find A Way by Tribe Called Quest is also a great place to start. Messing me up my whole head, changing me just like Peter did Martin. Now look at what you saw. And that gets us into one of the classic variations. This part. Speaking of which, got a leash and a wish, just a rock you miss, Come make on. a militant move. It's useful to think of this as starting with straight eights on the hats, then on every other one, playing the first two notes of the triplet, or sextuplet, depending on how you're counting one. Here I am holding up a whiteboard with the transcriptions to avoid a huge video production path dependency. They would quantize the drums, make all the drum sounds even, affix all the notes to perfect timing, and then they would take the snare notes, and it would be either every snare note or every other snare note, and they would move it forward just a little bit so that it was slightly rushed right before the metronome hit. Um, and that created another rub that would create the Dilla feel. Here I am again playing I Like to California. In my ears, I have Ben's drum track, and I'm trying to put my snare right where his was. And sure enough, it's a head. And here's the master himself, Chris Dave, playing a song called Slim and Juicy. Listen for the snare and you'll hear it. So we want that beautiful, faster than completely quantized snare beat in our prototype Dilla beat. When you sit down to practice this, you can start with the basic beat and find that halfway mark between completely straight and completely swung. You can play this with a metronome in your ear if it'll help. I'd keep it on quarters for now. Then experiment with moving the snare note ever so slightly ahead in the grid. Depending on what was more comfortable for me to play, you're either hearing that or I was playing it a little ahead the whole time. Here's Carson Gant exploring the same thing in a drum year lesson. Even though he's playing a more complex beat, listen for that just a little ahead snare. If you listen to his Moog bass, it couldn't care less if it got there on time, but somehow it does. Now let's talk about some of the liberties drummers have taken with Dilly. Because Dilla is a how rather than a what, so once you've got the basic algorithm, you can apply it to practically anything. My favorite example is probably this. This is Spanky playing Love Sample. It's a great example of how you can kind of pour the Dilla sauce on a lot of different beats.
For you transcription heads, get ready to take a screenshot. You can also throw those first two triplets on the hats, as I may or may not be doing here. But strip away the variation, and it's still the same DNA. Another thing I'd be remiss for not mentioning is the smack stack. This one's from Minel. You can use the stack in unison with the snare beat to thicken it up. Or you can play it just slightly afterward, like a drunk three-year-old. sound like the kick drum was played by like a drunk three-year-old so hope you've enjoyed this deconstruction of dilla beats wait 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 wait, wait. hang on you're not gonna give us a little sauce as i was saying no lesson would be complete without my personal take here's a super obnoxious thing i've been known to do it's based on an offset triplet either eighth or quarter note depending on how you're feeling the beat The important thing is that you experiment. There's really no right or wrong. Here's an exact transcription to screenshot. Can I go now? Anyway, that should give you a good overview of what, what we call Dilla beats on the drums are, where they come from, and how to play them. And once again, if you've enjoyed this lesson and you'd like to go deeper, I recommend my three video mini course. You can get that for free by clicking the link below the player. Dudes, it's been real. Hope you enjoy this one. See you again real soon on another lesson of the week.